So it says in chapter 43, the famine was severe in the land. When they'd finished eating the grain which they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, go back, buy us a little food. Judah said, we can't go back without Benjamin. We can't do it. The man said, you shall not see my face until your brother is with us. If you send, if you do not send him, we will not go down. For he said, you will not see my face unless your brother is with you. Verse 6. Now verse 6 is very important. Because verse 6 shows that Jacob's character has really not changed that much. As a matter of fact, verse 6 is kind of funny. Because what he says in verse 6 is, why did you treat me so bad, badly by telling the men whether you still had another brother? In other words, what he's saying is, why did you tell him the truth? This was the big mistake you made. You told him the truth. You didn't learn that from me. Where did you get this notion that you should ever tell anybody the truth? Don't you know that's not the way we work? That's not our policy? If you hadn't told him the truth, we wouldn't be in this trouble. Jacob still believes that the best thing to do is not to tell the truth, you see. It's so hard to get that out of him. But they say in verse 7, he asked us specific questions about our family. He said, is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? So we answered his questions. We told him the truth. How did we know he would say, you've got to bring your other brother down here to Egypt? There's no way we could possibly know that he would have said that. It's an amazing, this family argument over three and a half millennia ago. Three, over three and a half thousand years ago. This is about 3,800 years ago. And yet it sounds so real. It sounds so contemporary. It sounds like something that could happen today. Um, so, Judah says, If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, let me bear the blame before you forever. And then he says, you know, if we had left immediately when we were supposed to, we could have gone down there and back twice by now. That also sounds like a real argument between a father and a son. Verse 11, Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take the man gifts. We've almost eaten everything. We're almost out of everything, but we do have a little bit we do have some nice things left, just a little bit. We've got some balm. We've got some honey. We've got some aromatic gum and myrrh. We've got some pistachios. We've got some almonds. So let's take these little gifts to him, and let's take twice as much money to pay him, and let's also take back the money that he sent back to us. Maybe that was just an accident. Maybe that was just a mistake. And take your brother Benjamin also and return to the man. And finally in verse 14 he calls on God. May El Shaddai, may God Almighty grant you compassion in the sight of the, the man so that he will release you to your other, other brother and Benjamin. As for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. This is just like what Esther said in the book of Esther. If I perish, I perish. And basically what he's saying is, if I lose my kids, I lose my kids. I don't have any choice. If I lose them, I lose them. And my heart is broken forever. And I'm the most unhappy man who ever lived. But I don't have any choice. That's what Jacob is saying. So the men took his present, and they took double the money in their hand, and Benjamin. Then they arose, and they went down to Egypt, and they stood before Joseph. Verse 14 says that Joseph saw Benjamin, and he told his servant, bring the men into the house and let's make a wonderful dinner for them, a wonderful lunch for them at noon. 
So they brought him into the house, and they didn't know why they were being invited to Joseph's home. That made them very nervous. They thought, why are we going home with him? It probably has something to do with the fact that we had the money with us when we left. We're going to get a personal interview. This is going to be some kind of trap. So when they came, um, when they talked to the servant, they told him about the sack. They told him about finding the money. But he says to them in verse 23, Don't be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. Now here's what that makes me think. Remember a while ago we asked the question, How many Egyptians came to know the God of Joseph? I think this steward did. This servant did. At least this one man from who worked for Joseph, this Egyptian was talking about the true God, the true God who's in control of everything. That's verse 23. Then they bring Simeon out to them. Simeon is the one who's been left in prison. Simeon is the one who has been tied up. He's been waiting in Egypt for his father Jacob to change his mind. I don't know how long it took. But while Jacob was trying to protect Benjamin, Simeon was a prisoner in Egypt. And now finally they release Simeon. So by the middle of chapter 43, the brothers have arrived back in Egypt with Benjamin, and they receive Simeon back into their fellowship from prison. They are taken to Joseph's house for a meal. They wonder why. They speculate it's got something to do with the money that they had that they didn't think they were supposed to have, and they fear a trap. Verse 26 says that when Joseph came home, um, they brought to him the present that they had from their father, and they bowed down to the ground yet once again. Genesis 43, 26 the brothers are again face down before the, their younger brother Joseph. The dream is being fulfilled over and over and over. He says to them, in verse 27, Is your old father well of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. They bowed down in homage. They bowed down again. As he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, he says, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke? And he said, May God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph ran out because he was starting to cry and he didn't want them to see him cry. He was overwhelmed to see his little brother, who was his full brother. They not only had the same father, they had the same mother. When he saw Benjamin again, he was overwhelmed. And he went into his room and he wept. Verse 31 says he washed his face and came out. He controlled himself and he said, serve the meal. Now, he served them by himself. He ser and he, he um, well, excuse me. The Egyptians ate separately because they, they didn't eat with, with foreigners because that's something Egyptians don't do. But when Joseph seated the brothers at the table, and again, this, this is one of the most amazing scenes in the Old Testament. He seats them in their birth order. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, and so on until Benjamin. He seats them in their birth order. And they look at each other. And they realize this man knows the order in which we were born. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how they felt? This is a great story. This is a great thing that God is doing. Then at the meal he gives Benjamin five times more food than he gives the others. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world. 
and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.